Hello and welcome to Hands-On Auto Training. As many of you know, for the past eight years or so, I've done mobile diagnostics, programming, and such, and worked for another company uh, doing things like that. In my experiences, I haven't had to use a scope too much, um, but I'm learning more and more about them all the time. I did purchase a Pico scope a few months ago. I haven't had a lot of time to use it. Um, so what I want to share with you guys is I guess my lack of knowledge and actually uh, go set the scope up so you get an idea of how long it takes to set up for a certain procedure. Um, in this example we have my 2004 Honda Civic and I just want to set up uh, the crank sensor, cam sensor, uh, ignition control circuit and an injector control circuit um, just so we can know what a good car looks like. I gotta tell you man if you don't go out and start testing uh, known good cars so you know what good looks like you're not going to know what bad looks like so I'm learning more every day and I'm going to bring you along on the journey here as with any diagnostic testing or even learning um, we have to know what we're looking at and get an idea of where to go testing circuits so I printed up the uh, diagrams for the specific circuits I'm looking for for this vehicle so I know where we're going ahead of time before we go out and try it uh, we should start out with getting all the cables out and the scope itself. I'm going to need the back probes. Here's the back probes. we got the scope. I uh, like this little hook. Um, because we're checking an injector circuit, um, you can get a really high spike. It's good to use an, an attenuator to protect your scope from high voltage. This is uh, just the setup here over the next few minutes is just setting up the scope. I try to do a little bit of time lapse, but I just wanted to show you guys that I did set that up. And it does take some time. I probably have approximately 15 minutes into getting this job set up here. Uh, all the back robes in place. Uh, on this video, approximately 7, seven minutes and 30 seconds, I believe, is when the actual scope testing starts. But if you continue to watch here, you'll see uh, I try to show you uh, where we're probing on a diagram with each circuit and each test lead for the cam crank and the injector and coil control. So here we're going after the blue wire on the crank sensor, back probing it. scope testing you always want to get the best ground on the vehicle and this goes for multimeter testing too any type of testing you always want to get your lead on the ground the ground is the best place for your testing I'm going to go ahead and hook up channel A to the scope and then channel B we're going to use the we're going to go to the cam position sensor which I believe it's easy to get to in a timing cover and that's going to be the white and green at the cam sensor. This is easy enough to test on the sensor at this vehicle. Anytime I have the chance I always prefer back probing um, but sometimes you can't do it and you got to get intrusive and pierce the wire or whatnot. So we're on terminal 2, the green wire, and that, that is the middle wire there and this is going to be, I want to use, use this for Channel V, which is a red. You guys know the common sense part of this. Keep your leads from getting caught up in the belts and stuff. Super important not to be silly like that. <clears throat> and then we're going to use channel C. We're going to use for, let's say, our ignition control circuit. And our ignition control is yellow and green. It's terminal one of the coil, so that's easy enough to get to. Looking for the yellow and green. That's back probed in. And then this channel 
heat we're going to go to our injector control. And as I said before, if you can get a spike, you know, upwards of, I don't know, 60 volts, I think, 70 volts maybe, I'm not sure, um, but I don't want to overload our scope or have a problem. So the easiest thing to do uh, to prevent any of that problems is to use the uh, attenuator. So we're going to go into our injector control and that is, we're looking for a brown wire for injector number one. Okay, we're probed in there. So the next step is to be actually setting up the scope here. So on channel D, which I told you was our, we were using as our injector control circuit testing. We actually have to use the attenuator, which is really easy to use. It just, you just plug this in here and it goes between the scope lead and the scope. And then put the lead. So with a Pico scope, I don't know other brands of scopes. I'm still learning a lot about this stuff. Um, but with the Pico scope, you definitely have to have the scope plugged in before you uh, start the software, or else it will not uh, recognize the device. So let's go ahead. We'll hook up our scope. And the scope will light up. There is a little tiny red light right in the corner to say that it's on. And then as we initialize the software here, uh, that light uh, did go out. I'm looking, and I think it'll turn green. Yeah, once you're actually capturing, the light on the, in the corner of this scope does turn green. And uh, let me go ahead and start a screen record so you guys can see what I'm doing here and we have a whole lot of nothing we're showing like millivolts here we have to go and turn on each channel that we want to to have on um, and the scope here we can turn on channel B is a probe uh, we want to turn it on I recommend start about about twice as much as the voltage you expect to measure so um, Channel B should be a 5 volt uh, uh, cam sensor. And channel A, we're looking for a uh, 5 volt Hall effect crank sensor. So we'll put that to 10 volts. And then channel C, um, I, I'm thinking it'll be probably a 12 volt uh, on and off signal for our um, coil control. I'm not 100% sure, but uh, we're going to learn as we learn here. So I'm going to put that for a 20 volt scale and then the injector channel D this is the one with the at attenuator on there because we're going to be measuring a higher voltage we have to tell a scope actually what we're looking at here so we're going to go ahead here and scroll down and we should be able to find the 10 to 1 attenuator because that's what we have and uh, and then we're going to turn this on so we have all four of our channels listed here um, and what we're going to do is set this up for let's go let's say 50 milliseconds of division so uh, and I'm going to go ahead and crank over the vehicle start it up and we'll see what we need. So once we have our capture, we go down and hit the stop button to stop recording. Once we hit the stop button, we can scroll back through the frames of data that we have and uh, find one where everything was steadied out. And there we have it. So here's our patterns. We want to save this so we can look at it later. Just click on save as. You don't have to fill all this out, but if you do, it's helpful. But 
in the essence of time. We'll just hurry up and hit the save button. Change the name here real quick. And save and exit. Now we have a recording to look at in a more suitable environment. All right, guys, we got our capture saved. Very easy to do. And the beautiful thing with technology and this type of thing is we can uh, take this waveform anywhere, analyze it, and uh, whether you're in a shop environment, you can go to a quiet corner or find an office, go to the break room or something if you have a laptop. Makes it very easy to do. Um, but we just want to open up this file and take a look at what we actually captured and try and analyze that. And I'll show you a couple uh, things that I'm learning about PicoScope that really are pretty cool. So going into the file that we have, um, this is what we captured outside there. And right off the bat, it does look like a lot of stuff is going on. Um, if you get a chance to play with the Pico Scope or any of these other scopes that are on the market these days, everything seems like it's getting very user friendly. I mean, it's not as complicated as it used to be uh, years ago. Um, and I have little experience with it, but you can just click and drag stuff. Let's just put our injector pattern down to close to the bottom. Um, and then we'll grab our, uh, this is our ignition coil control for cylinder one. We'll drag that down to the bottom. We're just making a little more room. Um, as you see here, we have this, uh, I don't know if you call it noise or interference. The more I'm testing cars, I'm really realizing that this is kind of a, a common thing. It's not bad. The scope is just showing us exactly what the, uh, is on a signal. Um, it's on, actually, this is real. This is live. This is happening. The scope isn't lying. I really wonder, uh, internally on a computer, maybe somebody else that knows way more than I do can help me out, but I'm wondering... Uh, what type of filtering a uh, PCM for a vehicle actually has to filter out noise. Because I see these areas here and I'm like, wow, that's noisy. And what's really going on? I'm trying to learn and figure out here. So just uh, for example, all this uh, noise is all happening on ignition ev events. If we just uh, take our zoom tool, which the PicoScope has, super easy to use. Let's just zoom in on one section of the waveform here and we'll minimize this and what we see here is as this injector or I'm sorry ignition coil control uh, turns off uh, that's when our secondary ignition is firing and it's happening uh, you know twice per revolution of the engine which means uh, every time the coil fires we're getting that that noise into our signal we can easily filter this out um, when we take our captures, we don't want to use any filtering. It's when we're looking at a live signal, we don't want to uh, distort or take away from images we're capturing. We want to be as true to what's happening as we can be. But we can turn on active filtering, and as you see here, that just made our signal change a whole lot. That's taking away too much. Let's take this up to 100 kilohertz, um, which should give us a pretty accurate... Uh, view here so we're not losing a whole lot of our signal we still see that square wave very good like we should it's not a problem um, and we can do this with each channel so if we go to channel B and you see this large uh, spike here uh, let's turn on our active filtering and put this to 100 kilohertz and that cleaned that signal up a little bit uh, and uh, we still have some other uh, dirtiness in here. We can clean it up more if we want. Uh, we can bring it down to 50 if we wanted to. But it really is all, uh, or 10, it really is all a personal preference of, as we change this, you can see we're actually seeing the noise that uh, is actually on the wire. Um, but just, let's just, for our purposes, let's keep this at 100 and then for channel C, oh, didn't want that. I want to put that back 10 volts. For channel C, we'll uh, activate the filtering as well. Put that up to 100 kilohertz. And then for channel D, channel D looks pretty clean. We can activate the filtering and do the same. Crank that up. And it just cleans up our signal, so it makes it easier for us to look at what's going on. That's all that's doing. So over here we have our injector firing 
if we uh, zoom in on this using a zoom tool uh, just to look at our injector firing um, I've had a, two vehicles I can recall that I actually found uh, that did not have the injector pintle hub um, and that's this right here this is actually the pintle falling through the injector uh, through the coil of the injector and it generates a little bit of electricity um, and creates this bump if you just have a sloping straight down without this section here uh, more than likely you have a stuck pintle and you know there'll be an issue going on uh, but this is our injector supply voltage the computer grounds that to turn the injector on then the computer turns this off if we want to measure how long this injector is on it's very easy to do with a Beagle scoop scope we just drag these rulers out and it'll just measure that and uh, uh, that injector was on for 4.056 milliseconds, um, 4 milliseconds. So very easy to do to get rid of your rollers. You just click here and it goes away. If we want to go back to the zoom view we had before, we just hit this back button to undo the zoom. So we're back to where we were before. Um, and uh, just looking at this uh, waveform can be intimidating. But you guys know as well as I do, the injector on this old school car fires once every two revolutions for that cylinder. So our, uh, between here and here is 720 degrees of crankshaft rotation. So the scope is already set up. Your uh, degree ruler or rotation ruler is over in the right hand corner. We can just drag this up over to here and say, okay, this is zero degrees. And then it's already set to 720. So we know that right before our injector firing on that camshaft signal is where we're at for the first one. So we'll put that for the second one over here. So now this is set up so the software in the PicoScope knows between here and here is 720 degrees of rotation. So any other rulers we drag out, it'll be measuring from zero. And we can actually try to figure out uh, you know, you could just measure this over, so it says 360, and then you'll have a complete view of a crankshaft uh, rotation. And if we zoom in again, use our zoom tool, we can just get a better look at that. So here we have one revolution of the crankshaft, and we can start learning how to analyze the crankshaft sensor signal. So, Hey, thanks a lot for taking the time to watch this video. I hope you get something out of it. Uh, we've got to keep on testing and learning. Um, I'll continue to share what I learn as I go. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.